Well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Carlos de la Guardia and I'm going to give a short talk about a uh, form library that I've been playing with. Um, it's called questions. And uh, okay, so here we go. Okay, why, why did I write a form library? Uh, yeah, no excuse there. Uh, in my defense, many of us have written from libraries across the years. So, like, I took the liberty to get Eric Brehl's uh, tweet here to poke a little fun at myself and other people that have made from libraries. Uh, so, yeah, maybe when we're old, we, we're going to talk about the different from libraries that we created. Yeah, I just thought that I would write one. The idea is uh, a, a simple library for displaying and handling forms. Uh, they are defined using Python code, like many other form libraries, like the form or WTF forms. And uh, the, the gimmick here, or, or the, the, the different thing, is that the forms are rendered using a, a, a library, a JavaScript library called Surbyjs. And the idea is, uh, I always, when when I've been working with uh, even small pyramid projects or flats projects, when you have forms and and you are trying to use a, a form library like WTF forms or the form. Uh, you end up having to write a lot of JavaScript code to connect things together. And then some widgets that you want to use, they are not compatible with, with the libraries. So you have to create custom widgets or, or well, try to figure out how to make them run the form. So I thought, why not just do away with all the Python rendering and forget about the Python templates for for the form elements and just skip the markup generation and use JavaScript. So that's the big idea here. And uh, that's what question does. Questions gets on the back of SurveyJS, which is, uh, according to them, it's a modern way to add surveys and forms to your website. It's a very mature library. It's been several years in development. And it's compatible with, with most JS frameworks, with React, with uh, Angular and Vue.js and jQuery. Uh, so it's pretty easy to, to use it. And no matter what JavaScript framework you're using, you can, you can add functionality to it using your own framework if you need it. It has lots of features. It was built initially for, for service, but is now a full-fledged uh, form library. And uh, it also has many things that are unique to service, like for example, you can define correct answers for questions and then use, use that as a sort of test or quiz and, uh, and all the functionalities included there. So it's pretty easy to define simple quiz applications using this library. Uh, the license is MIT, so it's open source, free to use, free to distribute, and, uh, and that's a great thing. It also has a, form creation tool, uh, JavaScript thing. But that's not open source. It's free to use, though. So I, I want to show it a little bit. Uh, now, my library questions. The features it has. Uh, since we use SurveyJS, we get a nice and integrated user interface. And uh, the JavaScript widgets are really powerful not just the ones that, that it includes, but it's compatible with some other pretty uh, popular add-ons like select select two and, and uh, some jQuery UI things or bootstrap uh, things as well. So like I said before, it's compatible with Angular, jQuery, Knockout, JS, React, and Vue.js. And uh, Questions makes sure that you get the right files for each version, so you don't have to. If you want to get into JavaScript, you can 
take control. But if you just want to display things from Python and you just want to use Python, uh, questions can take care of everything. And there are more than 20 question types from simple text inputs, drop downs, to elaborate widgets, uh, for example, panels, uh, dynamic things, and matrices that you can pretty easily create. It also has multiple look and feel options, well, like themes, where you can change their form appearance pretty easily. And, uh, it includes Bootstrap CSS support. Um, it also has uh, full client-side validation and questions as uh, server-side checking as well. So that's the bird's eye view of what it can do. How does it look? Uh, for example, to define a form, you just, um, oh, sorry, I clicked a little too early here. There it is. Uh, for example, the concept of panels is that you can define a form that has some controls, for example, here a drop down question and a text question. And uh, then the real form, uh, you can use that other form as a panel using the form panel thing that, that, that questions provides. And you just pass it the, the other form that's going to be the panel and you give the title. And the dynamic thing means that the user can add uh, as many uh, social media platforms as desired. So for each one, he will get or she will get uh, another opportunity to add uh, a media and, uh, with a text. So uh, as you can see, it's pretty easy to define a, a panel and use it. It's like, like a field set in, in long terms. I use a field set and uh, it's pretty easy to define it and then just use it here. That's one of the concepts that we have. And questions also make it very, very easy, super easy to have multi-page forms that are completely wired. You, you get a, a next and previous button and you get a complete button at the end. You can go back and forth through the form as you want. And you don't have to take care of controlling uh, that on the server side, you just do it here. And, and when the form is through and the user completes, you get all the information from all the different forms. To define a multi-page form, you just create a couple of forms with some controls, for example, page one and page two here. And then you add the different fields that you want to use. Take a look, for example, at the drop-down question that allows things like uh, passing a URL for a REST, RESTful service to get the values. So uh, the, form, the library takes care of many of the things that we usually have to, to program in, in the Python side. And to create a multi-page form, you just create a new form and use uh, a thing that, that I call the form page, where you get to associate the form, each form with a page, giving it a title, and then you get a multi-page form. Right now, I'm going to go through, through the code examples quickly, and then I'm going to show how it looks in practice. Here's a, a simple form, for example, that, that I have. You can see the different fields. One thing that, that is pretty easy when, when using this library is to define live form behavior, when you need to show some question only if, if the answer to another question is a specific one or you need to filter choices in, in a select or, or in a checkbox group or a radio widget. You can do all that pretty easily here. If you take a look at the bottom of, of this code slide, visible if I'm right here, you say if the language question equals Python, that is the answer is Python, then this question will be shown. And if not, it won't be shown. Things like this are pretty useful to get uh, very interactive forms that that change according to the user responses and uh, and it's really easy to handle that which uh, it's not usually 
that easy when, when you're dealing with defining the things in the Python side. So in this case, uh, all the behavior of the form is defined in Python code, and uh, you get still a lot of control over the JavaScript side of the, of the thing. To handle the form data, once the user is complete, you just simply define, like for example, this is like a Flask application. You get uh, a view that's the post view. And, uh, and to get the data, you just get request, get JSON, and you get something like, like we see below here, profile data. So uh, it's, it's all JSON. You, you can take the data and, and uh, it generates JSON. The, the whole form actually is rendered as a JSON thing, which is pretty useful if you want to also export the, the code to use somewhere else. You can even generate uh, a static site that has a, a quiz or a form uh, without any other uh, Python code and just use it as a static file application. And uh, here's an example of how you would uh, get the form to display uh, this data that is above the profile data, have name, email, birth date, country. You can display it in, in a form like an edit form using just passing form data and, and the JSON data that, that you want. So uh, it's pretty easy to handle all the form data. And uh, to display the form, uh, there are a couple of choices. Like I said before, you can just generate a, a full HTML page and, and display that. And, uh, and that would be a, like a standalone thing. Or you can integrate it with, with something. Like for example, here we have a Jinja 2 template. And uh, the form gives you several things to, to take care of stuff. If you want to take care of the JavaScript completely, you can do that. But the form also allows you to uh, in, include just the JavaScript that is required according to the widgets that you selected. So if you use this loop for form.js, you will get just the JavaScript that the widgets that you are using on the form need. The same for, for, the, for the CSS. And the JavaScript for the form is, is inserted using the render JS call from, from the form. The only thing that you need is to define uh, an ID with the name of the, of the, of the HTML ID that you, you pass in. The default is questions form, and you can pass your own whatever you want. And that's, that's all you need to, to get the, the page rendering. So you can combine this with your own uh, resources and, and templates and just insert the form inside your application wherever you want. Uh, let me show you a little bit. Um, hold on one time. Now I'm going to show you, for example, this simple form. Here's the code for the form. Uh, as you can see, it's similar to the code that I was showing before. We have the dynamic thing, the, li the live control thing here. And it's a simple Flask application with a form that you can post the data to. And uh, we can start the server and run it. Uh, and here it is. As you can see, it's uh, rendered pretty clearly. If I choose Python as a language, it automatically shows me another question where I can choose which is my favorite version. But if I don't like Python, then it doesn't bother showing me that, that question. If I don't feel 
the value of the request and I get immediately a validation error and I can't move to the next page until I finish that. In this case, just complete the form. So that's, that's one example. Let's take a look at another one. Here's another one that uses the dynamic panels, which is the concept that I told you that you can add as many of, of something as you want. So here it is, an example. And this is a multi-page form. We define three different forms. They can also be used individually. If, if I wanted to just use this, this form, for example, page two as a standalone form, I can do that, just, just render that one. Or I can integrate it into a complete multi-page form using here. It's, so it's a very simple syntax to get the multi-form going and then I'm going to show oh, of course in the text page. So you notice that this is a different style of rendering the form. I just changed the name of the theme and I get a completely different thing. And then I get a multi-page form. I can go to the previews and the next pages pretty easily, go back and forth. Uh, optionally, if I, I select some fields as required, I cannot go to the next page until I fill up the required fields. And I can pick uh, my favorite sports. And this is the the panel theme that I that I said. Let, let's say that I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, so I say Cowboys, my, my team, and the sports American football, and I want to add another one. And uh, and I can have as many as I want or remove them. And everything is uh, ready to be used just, just by defining a dynamic panel and, and setting the options. So it's pretty easy to use and it gets a lot of, of interactive uh, widgets in your form pretty easily. Uh, you can also use the values of other questions. If I, I use my name here. And I can then have other questions that that take take the value of of previous questions and use it in different ways. And if I say yes to a question, then I get the other question to show up. And if I say no, it doesn't show. And when I'm ready, I complete the form, and, and that's that. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to get multi-page forms that do. Lots of things pretty easily. One more look at the definition so that you can see how little code is required to get that form that I show just now. Just that. Uh, a screen full of code is, is enough to get that form going. And I wanted to show also. Uh, this is the Surbi JS page, and uh, one of the things that they have is the Surbi Creator, which is a full-fledged form editor that you can you can use. Here you can see a very complex form that has lots of pages, and uh, you can set the options for for all of the different fields. You can see it allows you to get really to 
to the details of, of a very complex form and, and make it do what you want. And uh, one thing that's very neat here is that it gets you a JSON editor where all the form definitions that you create are here. It's uh, about 1500 lines of JSON that I copied and I have here. It's the whole JSON thing. And uh, I can, using uh, a form constructor that, that we define, get that uh, JSON from the file, read it, and create a form from JSON, getting that JSON there. Just one line of code. Once I have, I have the, the JSON, just one line of code. Oops. Sorry. I copied it from somewhere and I need to. that uh, what I was going to show you is that when you use the from JSON thing and you have the form in the right place and, and they're not trying to present it live, uh, you get you get a form like this one, which has uh, nine pages and you can fill it up easily. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Back to the presentation. Uh, inside the form, the library is uh, the Pydantic library, which uh, is a very, very neat way to, to, to use the Python type hints to create uh, models using schemas. And uh, basically everything in questions is, is from a base model that uh, has a configuration. And, uh, and the configuration just makes sure that all the fields in the JavaScript uh, format of, of the SurveyJS form definition are translated correctly to Python so that we can use camel case and not make our forms look ugly with with all the uh, oh sorry we use the snake case and not make a form recovery with with the camel case let me show you what a, a model looks like this is a question and it has all these attributes and uh, these are all the properties that are accepted by the library. Um, we have a complete val validation using Pydantic. So if you initial, initialize a form and you make, you give up an incorrect parameter or, or they don't give the, the correct type for something, you will get an error. So it has to be uh, correctly typed to, to get the Pydantic is a very nice library, and, and I hope I can use it more to do more things with this library in future versions. Uh, to generate the form, we basically generate a JSON code and get for, the, for each widget, we have some GAS, some CSS files, and the form elements that were, and we uh, we have to, uh, this is a step where we construct the form and, and just go go ahead and, and uh, generate a full JSON thing, and that's what 
what is presented in the in the form. And that's more or less what I have. Uh, I this is just an alpha version. I I started working on this a couple of months back, and and I'm just starting to imagine where we can go. Uh, it needs a lot more examples, though it has some documentation. And uh, let me. There, this is the the GitHub repository, no questions. And, uh, and we already have the read the docs documentation as well, with some information, more or less complete information about the features, how to use it, and code samples for everything. But still, it needs a lot more real life samples and and stuff. It's on right, right, so you can just pip install questions and get it running. And uh, that's not the correct window. And well, that that's about it. Uh, I would like to explore how to integrate with things like Django and. and and other forms, uh, and other Python frameworks, probably Pyramid. It's pretty easy to use already, in, like you saw in, in Flask, and, and should be very easy to use in Pyramid. But Django is another thing, uh, long, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we can also, uh, um, I would like to generate code for the forms created in JSON, like the one I was unable to show you. Sorry again, uh, but uh, the idea is to generate the code, the Python code for the form, so that once you get the JSON data, you can create the form and then modify the Python code. And uh, since we're using Pydantic, I would like to also add more validation that uses type hints. And, uh, and also, allow some sort of form creation from the Pydantic schema directly. Those are the things that I, I think I could work on. OK, <laughs> questions? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll be on Jitsi in case there's any question. And uh, that's me, my, my email. I'm on Twitter. And uh, you can visit my repos repository for questions. Uh, create issues or anything and give me ideas. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good conference. Thank you, Carlos. That was fascinating. I'm so pleased that you were able to participate in this phone conference. And